Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Tom Kelly, and this is Clean Cut Audio, a channel dedicated to helping beginner and intermediate podcasters make their shows sound better and get them done more efficiently. This week, I'm covering a topic that really stems from equalization. And if you're not really sure what equalizing is or the science behind it, we'll cover it briefly in this video. But if you check out my podcast, Clean Cut Audio, you'll learn a lot more about the science of sound and we'll build on a lot of those principles to learn more about frequency and how we can manipulate it to get a better sounding podcast. The concept we're talking about in this particular video is resonant frequencies. Typically in equalization, especially for voice, we're not looking to have an effect on the voice. Really, well, what I think anyway we should be doing is just trying to capture a natural sound, not trying to boost the low end, get a bunch of crisp high end, just make the voice sound like a voice, nothing particularly fantastical about it. Just make it sound like a natural voice. Now, with everything in our voice, in our recordings, and in nature, there are resonant frequencies. And this is basically just a buildup of one small frequency range in a spectrum. In our voice, we, we have a couple of different ones that are dependent on our recording environment and the microphone which we're recording with. And really what we're trying to do in the equalization process is identify these resonant frequencies, which again, is just a buildup that causes this kind of harsh sound in the voice. And we're trying to attenuate that or just cut it down a bit, not remove it entirely, but just kind of tone that down to give it, you know, that more natural kind of like flat signal that is pleasing and something that's able to be listened to for a long period of time through something like a 30, 45, 60 minute podcast. We're listening for a long time and there's, you know, there can be some fatigue that comes with it if our podcasts are not equalized properly. So we're really trying to figure out how to get the most pleasing sound for longevity and the listener's ears as they enjoy your podcast for an extended period of time. Frequency is, uh, in like the most beginner terms, you can think of it as pitch, uh, you know, whatever. The low frequencies are the really low pitch sounds. The high frequencies are the very high pitched. Now, our voice has a lot of different frequencies in it with different amounts. So there's going to be a lot of power in, in a man's voice in like 200 to 250. In women's, it's slightly higher. There's the really crisp high end. There's some mid ranges. And again, if you don't really know what I'm talking about, I cover it extensively in my podcast, which you can find at cleancutaudio.com slash podcast. The process of equalizing is adjusting the amplitude or the loudness of a specific frequency range, and it needs to be done with care because it can go horribly wrong sometimes or all the time. Bad equalization is worse than just doing nothing. So we want to make sure we know what we're looking for, and the first thing we want to find is those resonant frequencies and get rid of them. Now, in Pro Tools here, this is my actual session for a new podcast that I'm recording, episode 21. It's on dynamic versus condenser microphones. What's the difference? Not really talking about which one's better, but just what's the difference? How do these things physically work? How do they capture mechanical sound and vibrations and convert them into something your computer can read? So I'm working on that. And when I was listening, I heard this just this really annoying sound. And I've had an issue with resonant frequencies in the lower mid range of my voice for a while. And I'm just now getting some time to really dig in to my own audio. So in this section right here, you might hear this like, eh, 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 like tone that's just constant throughout some of my vowels. And it's interesting. I can't actually hear it that well in my headphones, but through my speakers, it was very, very present. And that's, there's a lot of um, problems with frequencies that can be really only audible through speakers, through sound moving through air. So there's a lot of arguments for speakers versus headphones. Um, Got to mix on speakers, I think anyway. So let's listen to this audio sample here. We're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference. So again, on headphones, it might not be that audible, but I'm hearing just like this really unpleasant tone. So I'm going to do something called sweeping in my equalizer here. I'm going to pull over Fab Filter Pro Q3. This is the curve that I use for my podcast. There's a couple extra things in there that don't need to be. 
this is how I'm equalizing my podcast. Very small moves. Nothing is really plus or minus more than two. But I'm going to pick just a frequency band here, and I'm going to make the uh, the Q very high, make it tight, and I'm going to boost it a lot. So I'm going to boost it by 12 decibels. I know it's somewhere around here. So this isn't going to sound good. The point of frequency sweeping, we're not looking for it's not going to sound good, but we're looking for this sound that is like ever present, just this constant tone that's always in our voice. And when we find that, we know that that's probably a resonant frequency and then we can then cut it. So let's take a listen through your speakers if you have them, but really listen to, again, none of it's going to sound good, but we're going to try to find something that sounds bad all the time and like significantly worse than the rest. So I'm going to start at a hundred Hertz I know it's higher than that, but let's uh, let's take a listen and sweep around here. We're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking okay, about the difference there. between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference. So we hear this like a constant ringing around 215 hertz. So. Let's listen to uh, without the EQ on. We're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be, we're going to be talking about the difference. And now that we've identified kind of like a harsh tone, we're going to lower the gain and actually cut some of that frequency. We'll start at uh, start at six hertz and just kind of take a listen. We're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic soloing just the frequency band. And we're going to be talking about the difference between. All right, it's a little harsh, so I'm going to only cut about three decibels, and I'm going to move on because I know there's something else in there. Let's uh, let's make another really tight bell here. I'm going to start going down from 415 hertz. We're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference be I think that's it. That's a really bad ringing and that sounds like the pitch that I was hearing in my voice. So just identified two resonant frequencies there. We're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be. And usually these really tight cuts, um, it can be a little obvious if, if it's too tight, it's going to sound unnatural. So we might widen that, that cue a little bit, the bandwidth there, the quality. We're going to be talking. And what you're hearing now is the sound that I'm actually taking out of the signal. Dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic. So this is the audio with those notches bypassed. We're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between dynamic and we're going to be talking about the difference between. So now that we've identified and we've removed these resonant frequencies, we're going to notice a couple of things happening. First of all, it's really good to remove these resonant frequencies because again, it's this large buildup of an unpleasant frequency range. And what happens is that hits your compressors harder than the rest of your signal because there's a lot of that sound. When your compressor is hit too hard, it's squashing some of those pleasant frequencies. So we have this unpleasant frequency that's engaging a compressor and it's now removing some of the tone of the frequencies that we like. So it's doing like double damage as we start processing further beyond our equalization. And the second thing is now that we've removed that big build up, this thing that was causing a lot of pressure in our sound, it's actually leaving more room for that pleasant low end to shine. So now the low end is actually quieter because we cut a lot of those frequencies but the pleasing tones in correlation to what we cut out are now louder in relation. Do you, do you understand that? Like there's, there's more room for that, for the pleasing low end to breathe. So it actually sounds like we have more low end in our voice now that we cut some of the bad low end out. So the process of equalization is just attenuating or boosting 
certain specific frequencies in the voice or whatever instrument we are recording. And the human voice is an instrument. So what are we equalizing? Well, we should be first subtractive EQing and we should be trying to remove unpleasant frequencies because again that's going to hit your meter super hard and while you might get a readout of negative 16 luffs it's not actually negative 16 luffs of pleasing quality of good mid-range and the presence range that contributes to intelligibility we're getting a lot of buildup of this low end that isn't actually helping the signal so when we cut the resonant frequencies our meters are going to be a more accurate representation of a full reading of good frequencies that contribute to intelligibility. The, the frequencies that allow you to hear the voice over the sound of cheap Chinese tires at highway speeds in the rain. You're competing with a lot of sound there. And those mid-range, the presence frequencies are going to help cut through. And when we remove those really annoying you know, usually lower resonant frequencies, there's more room for all the other frequencies to breathe, to be heard. It's actually going to help just everything sounds so much better if we know how to identify and cut resonant frequencies. If you want a much more in-depth conversation about this, if you check out my podcast, again, cleancutaudio.com slash podcast, there will be a link in the description for a very helpful episode that talks more about what's going on. And if you go back like five episodes you'll much better understand frequency and how sound works, how it travels, how it is converted by a microphone into something that we can put into a DAW and edit. There's a lot of really interesting science behind it, and I strongly encourage you to learn it so that you can better learn how to manipulate it and make it something that sounds really, really great. Speaking of not a great sound, it's my dog upstairs. I usually try to record these videos in the middle of the night, so there's no sound that I'm competing with, but I was feeling inspired because after 21 episodes of knowing there's something in my voice, but really being hyper-focused on a lot of other stuff, I had the time to identify 315 hertz is the enemy. That's what I needed to take out of my voice. I'm feeling really good about getting rid of it. I think my podcast sounds a lot better now. I hope you all learned something today. We talked about resonant frequencies and equalization. If you'd like to learn more, subscribe to the channel and make sure you ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. I did a lot of stuff again on equalization and frequency in my podcast, so check that out as well. And make sure you're subscribed there, cleancutaudio.com slash podcast. That's it for this week. I hope you all learned something great in the next episode that you put out. I hope it sounds better than the last. Thank you all so much for being here, and I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.